Welcome back, everyone, to Issues of Faith. We are talking with Professor James Hudnut Boimler. He is at Vanderbilt Divinity School, the former uh, dean of the Divinity School, now professor. We were talking about the potential great resignation of pastors. You're saying it won't be as bad as we at, at one time may have feared. So that's good news. And so I want to move on to some other stuff you study, religion and philanthropy. What, what do you mean when, when you talk about religion and philanthropy? Well, philanthropy is, uh, has, has several meanings. Uh, the most broad sort of Greek meaning is uh, love of, of people, love of humanity. Uh, and, and in the context of uh, our culture, it mostly means giving or volunteering uh, for the sake of others. And I've been involved for a number of years in the study of religion and philanthropy. What does, uh, what does faith have to do with uh, giving and volunteering, both for religious reasons and for uh, reasons of, you know, people have needs and you care about their, them in their needs. What is the state of philanthropy in churches now? Are churches doing enough philanthropy? Uh, you know, what's, what's very interesting about uh, religion and philanthropy to me is that uh, a lot of time pastors will get uh, worried that if somebody is gi giving generously to, I don't know, United Way or uh, uh, some uh, a camp, the Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts, they won't be giving in church. Uh, what, what we discover instead is that for the most part, people who are very generous with their churches are very generous with uh, these other 501c3 and not-for-profit organizations. Giving people are giving people all the way down. So, in fact, you might encourage people to be giving people from the pulpit just because they have opportunities in church and beyond church uh, to make their world a little bit better. We've come through this difficult time with COVID, with civil unrest, with a presidential election that was incredibly divisive. And we've seen churches get caught up in these political battles, yeah. and in some cases defined by them. And, and do you think that is happening too much, that they're defined by these political battles? And is there an opportunity to be more defined by philanthropy? Sure. Uh, uh, we ought to be known by what we love rather than by what we hate. That's a really basic kind of uh, Jesus uh, thing. Jesus and the law and the prophets, right? Uh, the love of God and the love of neighbor. And uh, anytime you find yourself caught up in sort of a, uh, the partisan politics comes to church or to your Thanksgiving table as a family, uh, you, ought to, you ought to press the reset button and uh, locate what it is we have in common because always the things we have in common are bigger than the things that divide us. But the things that divide us can become this spiral uh, so that after a while you don't want to see uh, the person you used to uh, uh, golf with or have coffee with or do these other things uh, as a person you liked or loved or Admired. Do you think churches now are defined by what they love and not what by, by what they hate? Uh, sometimes, sometimes it has it has become uh, one of the biggest difficulties that uh, uh, churches, just like uh, cable news, have become identified with a kind of partisan brand, and the partisan brand is not the gospel. Just period. Period. And what, where, where are we as far as giving, you know, philanthropically as a country, I guess, or to churches? If, if, if it's fascinating you study this. I mean, 20 years ago, 30 years ago, as opposed to now, are we giving more or less, or where are we? So we're, uh, as a society, we're giving more. One of the things that uh, used to be a, a just a truism in the study of philanthropy was that half of all uh, giving to any cause, colleges, hospitals, cancer, whatever, would go to religion. With the aging of the population and the, uh, the fewer young adults 
who are uh, making their way in to inside religious organizations. Religious giving is now in the in the 40, uh, 40 percentile range rather than half and half. Uh, and it's it's been dipping uh, year to year. Now there's a good side to this, which is that uh, things that didn't used to get as much uh, philanthropy are getting more climate change, uh, uh, nature, what have you. Um, the other side is that uh, religious giving was an opportunity for uh, poorer people to get involved in giving. Uh, take a look at uh, folks with uh, lower incomes who are church members who gave a lot through their churches for I don't know, parish nursing programs and camps and those kinds of things. So there's a, there's a bit of a sector that's getting perhaps under-resourced, and if we can look into the future, we might worry about that. Are you worried when you look into the future when it comes to philanthropy and, and religion? Well, so I'm, I'm more worried about uh, uh, the future of religion because religion is a meaning-making activity. Uh, what we believe in, what we dedicate our time and life to uh, constitutes something about who we are. And if, in fact, 35% of, of uh, young adults aren't involved in a religious congregation, either because uh, they don't have a faith or because they don't like all the partisan bickering that's going on inside the congregation, and I think it's a little bit of both, then this will be a different, uh, different culture, a different country. Uh, going forward. You wrote a book, Strangers and Friends at the Welcome Table, Contemporary Christians in the American South. Um, and that's coming out again. You actually wrote it back yeah. in 2007. It's coming out again. What, what can we learn from that? So, uh, no, no surprise to you. Uh, this is kind of the, the uh, Jesus-haunted region of, of America. This is the place where uh, our, our, our churches are most full relative uh, to other regions. It's a place where uh, no other religious body constitutes more than 0.6% uh, of the population. So you, you may see uh, a neighborhood with a lot of Muslims um, in Atlanta, uh, but it's <laughs> it's a neighborhood. It's not, it's not New York. And so a lot of our, our politics, a lot of our culture, a lot of the bless your hearts, uh, uh, our common customs uh, come out of the fact that we're a heavily churched people uh, to this day. And why is it strangers and friends at the welcome table? Well, so, so uh, the book is about continuities with uh, past uh, Christian behaviors and Christian groups and and groups that you uh, uh, might find a little strange. So I'll give you an example and that is uh, the Catholic Church was was never very numerous in in the South uh, prior to air conditioning uh, and not because of air conditioning but because of uh, population changes from the North to the South number of uh, you know, people from Buffalo who now live in in uh, in Georgia or Alabama uh, is constitutes more Catholics, uh, but so too do uh, all the uh, Hispanics who've who've come uh, from Latin America to work in the South in our booming construction industry, and so some of our most vital churches in places like Alabama among Catholics are. Hispanic churches, same in North Carolina. You wouldn't expect that. Uh, we're becoming more diverse even while staying more Christian. That's fascinating. All right, and that's coming back out. So it was released first in 2007, now it's coming back out. Yeah. I wish we could talk more. Professor James Hudnut Boimler, thank you so much for coming on. Thank you for having me. Thanks to all of you for watching Issues of Faith. Have a great day.